Welcome, everybody, to this month's August 2024 uh, Zone 33 ICA call. Uh, I've made everyone that needs to be a co-host one, I believe. I would like to recognize certain dignitaries in our group tonight, most notably our still relatively fresh uh, Zones 33-34 Director Patrick Eeks. I see a rotary coordinator in the form of Terry Weaver in the room. Uh, our former zone ICAs, uh, Patrick, and as Chris Jones as well. We've got an ARC. We've got DGs, E's and N's, uh, future DGs, the people that just don't realize it yet. I see ICAs and DMC. This is a fabulous fabric of the rotary world in our zone joining us tonight. And I appreciate all of you, as well as Zone 34 ICA, Joe Roth. Joe, I can't see. There you are. I saw you come in. Uh, again, welcome to everybody. Uh, I'm going to kick us off, and then in normal rotary fashion, I'm going to delegate. Uh, we now have a zone ICA team, and all the members of, of whom are willing to take part in these calls and, and do a lot of the heavy lifting, uh, which is a little bit different than the way it's been done in the past, but I think it's a good idea if it it proves to be a bad idea. It was somebody else's. If you enjoyed it, and then it was mine. So however you want to look at that is great. Um, part of what we want to do just to get started with is, of course, you're always free to view recordings of past discussions at the YouTube channel, the Rotary Zones 3334 YouTube channel. Uh, I just wanted to touch on a few things from the past. Uh, Mike Walker who's a zone ICA team member had mentioned providing the template to the ICAs. I think we'll get into that a little bit later because there are some other things at this early point in, uh, you know, the switch of the rotary calendar year, if you will, where there's just some things that, that haven't been explained very well, maybe some expectations that haven't been presented in the right way. We've got some transitional issues that we want to try to touch on, especially as some of those pertain to that worksheet that we do. Uh, every month and ask the ICAs to come in and check off the boxes just to make sure we're all on the same page and everybody understands what's being asked of them. So we're going to do that. Um, with that said, let me just start by saying that what we in the clubs are doing to promote this initiative of integrative growth and not just the clubs, but we're always looking for other aspects of finding ways to be innovative. There's certainly an importance of contacting and working with other district leaders and searching where those efforts best fit within the district, whether that be club visits for the DGs that are on the call, district events for those who are in leadership, DMC meetings for those who happen to fit that description, as well as just leadership in general. And we don't have to figure out how to do it alone. As I've already touched on, we have a zone team. Uh, so not only are the past resources that we've used in these calls over the years still available, but we've got this, this group of people that work regionally, if you will, that certainly have a handful of the districts within our zone associated with them for assistance purposes. And Terry Weaver will tell you that from the, 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 the zone DMC standpoint, that's going to be the, the high point of, of how we want to approach membership in general, is that we focus on having this assistance team because there are there are three categories of Rotarians about membership. Those that don't care, those that don't essentially know that they should care. And then there's this most important group, the ones that care but don't know how to take care of things. And that's what that assistance team is designed to do. It's going to be highlighted from not only a general membership perspective, like I said, with the RCs and the assistant RCs, but also moving forward with this new zone ICA team. So with that said, uh, I, I'd ask anybody that's on the team to identify themselves. Otherwise, I'll run down the list. So we've got Ken Fleeson in District 7280, Al DeLucia, who was not able to join the call tonight from 7305, immediate past District Governor Renee Laws in 7610, Patrick Longano, of course, from 7670, and my fellow classmate and Flamingo friend Mike Walker from 7680. So with that said, I'm going to pass the mic off to Patrick and Renee, who are going to get us started with our facilitated session. And I think you're going to enjoy the topic we're going to talk about, this being August. There's the teaser. Mike, Renee, I turn it over to you. Was that Mike, Renee, or Patrick and Renee? 
Uh, I'm sorry, Mike, and uh, you're right, Patrick and Renee, and and Mike. If you wanted to steer this discussion, since you well, already, I, I think I'm going to be steering. I think I think they're introing, and then I'm going to be steering, as I understand. Right on. Have at <laughs> it. Let's hear. It. Hear it. So, hey guys, good to be here, Patrick. You wanna you wanna <laughs> do your magic? No, I'm following your lead, Renee. You're good. <laughs> Okay, welcome to the magic of Rotary. <laughs> there you go. Um, we're we're here to cheerlead and get you guys motivated. When I popped on the call a few minutes ago, I heard someone say, "Boy, this better be a lively call because I'm having a day." Was that you? <laughs> Your wish is our command. <laughs> um, all right, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over. Let's get it started. Let's let you lead this. And and we'll. I want to make sure everyone can hear me. I'm having some uh, uh, technology issues with my uh, video, so I may cut off. But just let me know if, for some reason, the the uh, the, the microphone isn't working properly. So this month is you know membership month, but really it's the second month of being ICAs, and the ICA setup is is a little different than other positions in the district in that it's for the most part, with suggestions from the district, uh, uh, the ICAs are chosen by the zone. And uh, so, you know, there's obviously there's some issues, there could be issues with how integrated you are. And so I wanted to have a discussion that talked tonight for the next 20 minutes or so about uh, integration with the district membership team, also resistance that you're having, any suggestions for overcoming that. And for example, uh, the issue of concerns about cannibalization of, of clubs, there's a lot of a pushback. And so I, I wanted to, I'd be happy to throw a topic out there, but I just wanted to see if anyone has any thoughts uh, on how they've worked with their, I guess more specifically their district membership chair in as an ICA. Does anyone want to jump in on that topic? Has anyone done what they Chris. feel is a good job with that? Chris, go ahead. Hey guys, sorry, um, I'm on the Peloton, so I'm uh, multitasking you guys, but uh, <laughs> so I feel really strongly about this topic. Um, I, I, you know, I personally think that the ICA has to be completely integrated with district membership. And uh, sorry, I was on a hill. <laughs> In 7690, um, we are, John um, Spillman and I work uh, side by side on membership. Um, you know, I would consider myself as ICA, as, you know, his chief lieutenant, and I think he would probably view it as such. Um, you know, we work together on every training, you know, and I've, I've said this at previous, you know, ICA and membership meetings. Um, I, I think that's critical because, you know, innovative clubs should be taught at every training opportunity that you have um, in your district. Um, anytime you can get in front of club leadership, or district leadership, those things should go uh, hand in hand. Um, you know, so I understand that in some districts, it's maybe a little bit more siloed. If you are personally in one of those situations, I would highly encourage you to look at the um, leadership structure and make sure that as an ICA, you are on the overall membership team and you always have a seat at that table. Now I'll go back to my hill. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Uh, anyone else want to expand on that? Has anyone had pushback from their district membership chair of, of not really wanting, uh, not sure how to integrate you or not having you integrated? Jose's got his uh, Jose, go ahead, Jose. Mike, yes, I just wanted to quickly add to add uh, what Chris just has mentioned. Uh, it's in integral that the ICA be in tandem and supportive of the DMC and they work collaboratively, right? The best way I've been able to help DMCs understand that is to remind them that they have a new club development chair role 
as a subcommittee within their DMC position. So they can appoint the ICA to that role if they wanted. This way that ICA is getting a consistent communication from RI as well as the DMC. And it's easier for them to understand how the ICA can help develop these new clubs with an innovative mindset. So hopefully that role can help you all out. Sean, could you address uh, the ICA uh, appointment by the zone versus by the district and kind of where the thinking is right now on that? And, and how many people were appointed by the zone versus chosen by within the district? Are you meaning with regard to the, the 17, well, 16 yeah. and a half district yeah. ICAs exactly. that we have? Exactly. Yeah. Again, there was a system put in place and it, it precedes me by my 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 very wise predecessors in Patrick Eakes and Chris Jones, that this is a zone entity, that the, the message that needs to be spread across the zone, its districts and each district's clubs is very much a, a, a zone driven one that clearly membership in the traditional way and trying to grow it is not as successful now as it once was in the past. So to be sure that we're getting the a message out, the right message and a consistent message, that everything is is driven at the zone level. And while each district surely um, and is expected to provide its own input as to who it is that runs hot in the district in that way, so as to hopefully be the optimal person to serve as the district's ICA, is still somebody that you know, is is vetted, so to speak, that there's conversations go on, that the expectations both directions from the zone to the districts and vice versa are, are known by everybody, are agreed upon, that you know what it is that is being asked, uh, that the districts know that the zone is here to support the districts and whatever help it may need. But as far as the person goes, it's not just you go out and pick somebody. Because the, as you know, if you're one of those people that fills out one of those monthly reports that we provide to Director Patrick every month, it doesn't end there. That information is compiled and shared and taken to the board in Evanston. And what it is that we do and the success we have is directly reported to his 16 contemporaries, if you will. Um, you know, zone membership of what we're doing, things like MAP and the ICA program are not limited to just our zone pair. They're, they're taking global hold. And there are people on this call that can speak to that better than I can, that are in better positions and, to be able to give you examples of that. But I know that it's happening. And, and hopefully, I, ask, my, uh, that may, those, may, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, along those lines, I might ask uh, Director Patrick, just to finish out the context to come back to the discussion, is how other district or how other zones across the US are handling ICA and is it typical for zones to appoint an ICA person in a district or just give us some broader context to know how we operate with them? Well, what I can tell you is that even between zones 33 and 34, we do things a little bit differently. Joe Roth is on the call and, and can, can validate that. Um, when the Innovative Club <laughs> Advocate Program was set up, and this was January, the very end of January 2020, right before the world shut down, uh, Chris Jones and I were there. We were basically given this mandate to go out and create this program without a ton of structure or guidance and certainly no funding. Uh, so it got implemented in different ways around the country. Uh, and we took note of how some other areas approach things and both that we thought were really positive and some that we thought wouldn't work very well for us. Uh, and, and I'll let Chris Jones speak to this, but um, I felt like the West Coast zone pair was the one that uh, took an approach that made a lot of sense. And in some ways, we we mimicked what they were doing. Now, since then, the West Coast pair of zones has completely changed the name away from Innovative Club Advocate. And because this is really being implemented as an unofficial, I, can, I hesitate to even call it a program, but an unofficial movement, um, the zones are free to attack it the way they, they want to. Um, as... I think Sean said earlier, Chris and I, when, when we were first putting together this team, um, we knew that we needed to get out of the gates fast. And so in consultation with the sitting governors at that time, um, we, we pretty 
quickly put together a team of people we knew were proven in the membership or innovative thinkers, had the energy and the bandwidth to, to jump into this. And I think it's one of the reasons that our uh, zone had pretty quick and, uh, and frankly, had a class success in this area. Thanks, Patrick. If I could add to that, um, and, and Sean alluded to this in his coverage as well, but what we are doing as a team is vitally important. It is where the, the, the vast amount of growth is coming inside of our zones. And that's why zones 33 and 34 have led North America the last few years in membership growth. And Patrick and I made the decision early on to make this a zone committee because it was just that important. And the fact that the zone director needed to report these results to the rest of the board of directors, we wanted accountability at the zone level for this committee. So that's the reason it was set up this way. And uh, I'm, I feel fortunate that Sean has decided to continue with that endeavor. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Uh, with that framework, I want to shift gears a little bit. I think we have about 10 minutes left to talk about, I guess, I wanted to talk about resistance, but a, a resistance that, that I've heard quite a few times is the issue of cannibalization. And that that's a pushback that a lot of clubs have, that they feel like whatever is done with the new club, it's just going to be people leaving their club. And uh, I'd like to get some feedback on ideas about that. Uh, Patrick, I see your hand is raised. Um, yeah, I have a lot of experience with this. That's one of the um, biggest questions um, that we have to overcome, the objections that we have to overcome while we're trying to help start a uh, new companion club. Um, you know, money's number one, of course, but, uh, you know, um, I get this in every call. If we do a lower cost or if we do a different type of club, what's keeping um, uh, our members from going to that? And, you know, the first several times that you have to overcome this objection is a little nerve wracking. Um, but the data just shows that it doesn't do that. It brings more new people uh, to it, uh, to the club. So uh, the cannibalization thing just really has not uh, taken shape. Um, you're going to have a couple. Uh, I always tell a club when I'm working with them, you're going to have a couple. But here's the thing. Those one or two uh, people that might opt for the other companion club, uh, they were going to leave you most likely this year anyway, and we're looking for an excuse. Um, so one of the things that I'm most proud of, um, and I want you guys to to think about this, um, it's not just all about growth. Uh, it's about giving people choices coming into Rotary and giving people choices before they leave Rotary. So when you when you have those people at the end of the year that um, or the end of each semester, um, basically, um, that um, tell you in December and in June that they're leaving because they're now coaching T-ball or they got a new job or any of those other life reasons, you will now have an option to save those people um, going in. Uh, Rotary Club of Lake Mary down in 6980 at the end of this last year gave the people before they left a choice um, and uh, all seven of them uh, chose to stay in the club but serve differently uh, in the companion. Um, so uh, the cannibalization doesn't... Um, doesn't really um, manifest itself um, the way that most people would think. And if you think whole club, um, it, uh, it, it's never really a problem. And uh, it's been my experience just based on the data that I've received. Um, right now, it's a little over 12% of people who come in through companion clubs wind up in the home club, uh, far more of a percentage than that leave and go there if you take out the people that you're just saving from from leaving, so you're, uh, giving, you're giving them two two ways to join. You're giving them if you give people a choice, you can serve this way, this way, or even Carrie Gray is on the phone or on the on the call here. Um, she was uh, she did a club up in Wilmington. If you're on the on the DMC uh, Terry Weaver's call the other day, um, they I think have 46 people in their companion club right now, uh, just absolutely killing it. And she did one of the best graphics that I've ever seen in my life. It was 
rotary three ways. You can do this, yeah. you can do this, and you can do this. And when you show people and give people those options, um, they will pick one. If you don't give them any options and it's just, this is it, um, they will search out other options and might not choose you at that point. So um, please think about that as you're doing it. Give people way in, choices coming in, and choices going out. Thank you, Patrick. Well, Sean, I see, Sean, you've got your hand raised. I do. I just want to th piggyback on what Patrick said. And if Al DeLucia were on the call, he would tell you this himself that to the contrary of seeing people leave the traditional club and moving to the companion, it's more often that you see new people join the companion and then start to learn more about what Rotary is like and actually move their investment from the companion or in addition to the companion to the parent club. You know, that's one of the arguments. Well, these people aren't expected to endorse foundation giving like we are. But when they join the companion, you often see them as they learn more about the foundation from the companion aspect to start getting more into Rotary and actually voluntarily giving to the foundation and not giving to it only because for the last 80 years, this is the way we've always done it. Okay. Anybody, I'm else, anybody else run into situations like that? Camille, go ahead, Camille. Oops. Sorry, I was um, managing two or three things. I was asking Patrick for that infographic. Um, we have a companion club and it is small and it has not cannibalized at all. It has saved people. Um, we haven't had them cross over. The ones who are joining are, I'm, I'm a Cary, Rotary Club of Cary, for those of you who don't know. And the ones who have joined are um, young, generally um, in their 30s to 40s. Um, they um, are highly likely to travel. They are, um, I, I think almost all of them are parents, heavily involved in the community. They bring lots of ideas. They run our projects for us. Patrick knows as well because he helped me set this up. And we have not, they, the group hasn't grown. Um, somebody um, moves over because they were going to, uh, as, I forget who said this, um, as, um, as they were looking to leave the club, they switched over to Companion anyway. Um, a couple of those went ahead and left the club, but that's kept people. Um, and um, however, we do have a sister club that has struggled with this. I believe it's the approach they've taken from a membership standpoint where they put that out there first. You have a cheaper and you have a more expensive way to join Rotary. That's bad languaging, that's bad marketing. And um, we've discussed it. You know, I'm, I'm one of their go-to people. Um, and it, you've, it's got to be offered as a choice if this other thing doesn't meet your needs. It can't be the first choice you offer someone. Um, and that's really the only thing I've heard where that's the issue. It's not cannibalism. It's um, cheap rotary, and you can't offer it that way. Yep. Mark, that's go my ahead. thought. But Thank we're, you, um, when did you introduce this to the state, Patrick? Um, before COVID, right? It was during COVID. Whenever uh, Patrick and Chris said go, <laughs> early okay. COVID, just well, the start of COVID. So four Pretty years much. ago, we yeah. we went on it hard and fast, and we have support from the club. Although I will say, right, that's exactly right, Andy. Um, I will say that we have support from the club, although we have some people who support it more um, because they understand it more. Um, we have one member two one one member um from satellite on our board um and that's appropriate we did have two now we have one um we have one speaking to the club in two weeks um these are the members who are bringing in our our high high value projects um not just from a fundraiser standpoint from a service standpoint so anyway that's what i have to say thank you camille uh mark yeah, just a couple of things. I, I I totally think innovative clubs are the future. But can we uh, can we change our own uh, vocabulary and bad language, as Camille just said? Cannibalism sounds awful. Can we like fix that up? And <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I would like a, I'd like a shorter word if you got one. I don't know what the term is, but I don't know. Well, I, I, <laughs> I feel I, weird I, when we're saying we're cannibalizing each other. Poaching. I was, I was talking to Marge Norton. Poaching. Morning, I, mean, I like it, Sean. Po poaching. 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 Well, uh, Marge and I had that exact conversation this morning. We don't like 
things with too many syllables. And uh, so that, that violated that. I'm going to make one final comment on it. And that's that whether it's a new meeting time within a club, uh, the parent club or the companion club that plans to always be part of a, a parent or a satellite that plans to branch off on their own one day or a totally new club. I think in every case, there needs to be some poaching, if you will. Thank you because you need some experienced Rotarians in that club. I don't think, I, I think the likelihood of success is much higher if there's at least two, three, four experienced Rotarians in the club versus a completely, a, a club of people who don't have any Rotary experience. So maybe minimal poaching, but not excessive. Um, and I think I've run out of my time, haven't I, Sean? No time limit. If the discussion wants to continue and take us a certain way, then we follow. Okay. If it, if it doesn't, well, I, we can I, throw in. I, I'd love to get some other thoughts and, and input on this. Uh, although I do think we do realize that we're not hurting the clubs. And and I think that's that's a conversation we can have. Uh, another well, thought that I have in terms of how do we go about implementing what we're trying to do and I'll put it out to alternative to this, but I think a key part of this is going to be working with your AGs and getting them to maybe identify one or two clubs in their areas that might be candidates for you. You, know, you can't know all 50 whatever clubs, but the AG should know their clubs pretty well. And if the AGs are have their antenna up for possibilities and bring you into conversations, mm -hmm. I think that might uh, be a way to accelerate the process. And I'm open to alternatives to that. Michael, you've got a couple of hands up. I think Albert's- Oh, sorry, up. Albert. I'm, I'm sorry, Albert. Go, go ahead, okay, Albert. I, I, want to give you, I want to give you a different perspective as to how I see this. And I think folks are looking at this completely wrong. It is not cannibalism. It is not poaching. Because you think about it, are they going to the Lions Club? Are they going to another civic organization? These are Rotarians. So when we established our satellite club here in Indian Land, 10 people moved over to the evening club. We did not panic. That evening club is now 21 members strong and continuing to grow. Our lunch club is continuing to grow. So if we're thinking of it as a cannibalism or we're losing we're totally missing the boat. You're not losing anyone. They're just they're just joining another club that best fit their schedule. And, and with ours, it was 10 very seasoned Rotarians, which actually helped the, the evening club considerably because we get, had all that experience. So those 10, now they've got 11 more, and it is thriving. So I think people are seeing this completely wrong if they're thinking of it as cannibalism or poaching. It's growth. That's what it is. Well, that's that's what I wanted to hear, uh, Marge. Oops, sorry. Um, anyway, so in our district, we're just kind of getting started a little, little bit with this, um, but there is some concern about clubs that have started it and worked it with it that feel a little bit like can cannibalism. Um, but the thing is that to me, it is really expanding. Rotary, getting out there with people who would never, you know, you always have to, as as Mike said, you have to have some people in there that are the real movers and shakers of it, but it's bringing people in who are not Rotarians before. It's not just, to me, it's not just shifting your, your current membership over to a new membership. To me, it's really bringing in new Rotarians. That's, that's my two cents. Awesome. Thank you, Marge. Eric. Um, how do the alternative types of memberships fit into this discussion on alternative club structures? So the way I think about that, and uh, Sean and I and Mark have talked about this, is I find it easier as a framework to say there's two things going on. And one is the relationship to the parent club. It could be the parent. It could be a, a, an alternate meeting time within the parent. Uh, you know, alternate uh, membership structure or membership type, or it could be a companion that plans to always be connected to the parent. It could be a satellite that plans to branch off or, or uh, maybe a club that has nothing to do with an existing parent club. But then the second part of that is 
their purpose, you know, whether it's a service, cause base. Uh, I think of impact as more of a service, maybe it's an alternate meeting time. So I think it helps to kind of separate the thought about how they are related to the parent from what they, what the purpose of the club is. Mike, can I throw something on that before we take the next question? Yeah. If anybody tuned into the Zoom information call yesterday, and I'm not sharing this or reminding you of it to pat myself on the head, but <laughs> I will tell you that on more than one occasion, I said during my 10 minutes that anybody that wants to be in Rotary should be able to be in Rotary, period. If there's an existing structure that suits them, that works for them, then join it. If there's not, then come to the club and say, hey, I'd like to have this kind of membership or this level of membership. If they say, we can't do that, then go somewhere and start your own. And if you have enough people that are similarly minded to what it is that is in your list of priorities, that's how new groups get formed. Whether you want to call them alternative time, whether you want to call them alternative meeting, whether it's a different membership type, or if it ends up being its own standalone entity or it's companion with another. That's not poaching. Give me the opportunity I want. If it doesn't exist, then give me the freedom to go out and build it myself. Because we're all designed and our efforts are geared towards improving the community. If everybody from North Central West Virginia in my district wants to migrate north to Pennsylvania in 7305, sure, I'll have to start over and start finding new people to be Rotarians in West Virginia, but I won't be disappointed because we haven't lost anybody. They just went and did the Rotary thing somewhere else. And that's part of being flexible that Rotary International stands for, is given the flexibility. So again, that anybody that wants to be in Rotary can be. And there's nothing that we need to do to get in the way of doing that. that Amen, John. Sean. There's my it. Hugh? Amen. Go ahead, Hugh. I think Hugh is next. That's exactly right, Sean. Very well said. One thing that I haven't, we haven't talked about, but is happening in some areas is that the club, the existing club, has created two or three other times for the club to meet. And it's all still under one umbrella, but they almost have like little satellites, but they aren't going through the satellite process. They've just got, oh, well, we'll have a time on Wednesday morning for a group of members that want to meet then. We'll have lunch on Thursdays for those that want to, and we'll have an after work time on Tuesday. And they have grown their club that way uh, without going through all of the other aspects. Yes, they have a person in each of those times that acts as a chair so that they have some structure there and works with the, with the, single president of the group, but it's a different way of growing Rotary that people are, they all do projects together. They do uh, different things individually too, but it's another approach. Awesome. Thank you, Hugh. Patrick. I, I just want to say something because after Preacher uh, Sawyer got down off the pulpit there, which was awesome, by the way. I, I love saying that that money and and uh, nothing should be a barrier to service. Absolutely not. But I was kind of in those early days, um, and where Patrick and Chris kind of plucked me from obscurity um, on you know um, in, in Western North Carolina here, and it was the wild, wild west. Everybody was just kind of doing their deal, and what I've seen just being involved in this. Uh, a process from this side of it is that it's kind of shrunk back just a tad bit. But what's going on right now is that people are starting to get it. Remember, it takes time for it to filter down the message. I mean, I used to call Patrick and Chris going, somebody's going to shoot me in Rotary. <laughs> I mean, somebody's going to like drag me and run me out of town. And they're like, just keep going. 
And but right now it's becoming more and more accepted. And the messaging is there. So you're going to see another pop with the alternative to, um, time um, things. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. If you set your mind to it this year, over the, I mean, if you set your mind to it, this is a gold field that you can walk out to and pick up members right now. You can do it because it the the, the barriers are down. Um, there are ways that you can get this done. Uh, Rich Salon's got his hand up. And I know somebody asked a question about membership type. It don't matter how they come in, just as long as they come in and serve. You know what I mean? The only reason me and Rich have talked about this a long time, the only reason why I do a companion versus this, it all has to be that first interview that you have with that club. If you have one of those clubs where it's like, well, if they're a member here, I mean, I pay for food. Do they pay for food? You know what I mean? No, so you remember, guys, we, we all have those clubs that are out there. So when you interview that club for the first time, you'll be able to see if membership type or a companion might be, you know, the best thing for it. So you're in a very, very exciting time um, for like leaders like Sean and Patrick and Chris have kind of blazed that path and taken down the bar barriers for us. So um, I'm good. I'm real excited about how this year is going to pick up because everybody here is just innovative. So and thank I, you. And I just add to that before Rich and that's that, uh, you know, I think it goes back to the Council on Legislation in 2016 that just allowed it to be the Wild Wild West, and it's just taken us this long to realize that we can uh, do new things and we can grow in a variety of different ways. Albert has proven that, and uh, with that, Rich, I'll let you go ahead. So I want to go on record by saying what well, we just heard from Sean and Patrick Longano. That is some of the the, the best acting I've seen. Blows Hollywood away. You guys are phenomenal. You guys are rock stars. Thank you. But to piggyback on what Patrick said on the alternative types, it, it's 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 all within the umbrella of innovation because they're really innovative types. You call them corporate, family, service, you know, YP35, whatever we're going to call them, passport, left brain, right-handed, chemical engineering type. But one thing I found in, in our district, 7600, is, is we've heightened the, the interest on the alternative types and, and, and got a few comments back on clubs that talk a little bit about Satellite or Companion. They say, you know, we, we think we, we would kind of rather focus on innovative membership types instead. And, and, and I don't hammer them. I said, you know, this could be an opportunity to do both. There's nothing that says you can't pursue a companion club and maybe a family membership type or a satellite club and a corporate membership type. So anyway, I've had to go out there and provide a little extra in, in inspiration. So again, you probably face a little pushback that I face, but uh, our clubs can do it. Thanks for and listening. I think, I, I think a role of the ICAs this year is to let clubs know that it's wide open, that they can, it, it's just limited by their own creativity. And yes, give them some, you know, a lot of ideas for different ways they might structure it, but let them know that there's a lot of flexibility from Rotary and how they grow their club and, and grow Rotary. I'm done talking now. <laughs> Me too. I, I'm going to turn it back over to Sean uh, because I think there was more on the agenda uh, than my 20 minutes. Well, there certainly is. And and thank you all for a very lively discussion. Sorry if I was too great a portion of it and sorry for the, the pulpit, but man, I, I love the bang on that thing. And, uh, and I'm like all of you, very passionate about this. And there's more than one way to do it. We just have to be willing to do all those different things. But with that said, thank you to the members of our team. Of the of the four out of five that are on the call tonight, we have very conspicuously heard from Renee and Patrick and Mike Walker. There's one that we haven't heard from yet. I'm not putting him on the spot by saying this because he is prepared to, to move this part of the agenda forward. And that's our friend way up in the north. Ken Fleeson, I believe you have a role that you would like to fulfill 
during this month's call. Is that correct, sir? Yeah, um, it was great conversations. And um, if I can just add a couple of things to all that conversation. I think the one thing that we as ICAs need to convince our clubs is tear down the walls of tradition and allow people to be open-minded and creative in how they put together new clubs. Um, our district has chartered a mission, Appalachian mission group. That's their sole focus. We're about ready to to charter a new group that is part of a cultural district in one of the towns here. Um, it's just giving them structure. So be creative in how you approach clubs and also approach this idea of putting together um, Rotary Clubs. Um, so again, great spirited discussion and it's now my honor to introduce our district um, our district board representative, Patrick, and ask um, for his comments. Thank you. Well, let me just say, uh, I love the spirited conversation. I love the energy behind it. Anybody who's cheated during this meeting and looked on Facebook will see that I had already posted a picture of this group way at the beginning and said, it's our job as leaders to build bridges to those people who have our values. And that's really what we're talking about here is, is that there are plenty of people out there who are like us. They have our values. They would be Rotarians, but for something that gets in the way. And it's our job to remove that something, whatever that obstacle is, cost, time of day, whatever, whatever it may be. Uh, and so I'm, uh, I am so excited. I'm thinking, I'm sure Chris is as well, thinking back four and a half years ago, thinking, now what? After we'd spent a couple of days, right? how do we get this thing going? This is built out into such a robust team. So I, I'm excited. What Chris, Chris said is right. Uh, there's no question the RC team is working hard. They're working with existing clubs. They also are obviously our partners in this effort, but the incremental piece the innovative clubs and innovative membership types and just innovative thinking can bring to our membership is, is almost limitless. It, it is the piece that can put us over the top. Uh, in 22-23, we were within 60 members of being positive for membership as a zone. We were that close, not quite as close as past year. Um, but we are definitely within striking zone to start growing our zone, to start growing Rotary and start growing our impact and our fellowship and our foundation work. We're definitely within striking dis uh, distance. And I really think that this group that I'm looking at right now, this is the group that can make it happen. Um, Sean is correct. Uh, we do hold each other accountable, especially among the North American directors on this. Uh, and so I hope that this group as well uh, without this sounding particularly ominous, because that's not what I intend, I hope you all will hold each other accountable as well. Stephanie has asked us, each of us in our district, to create at least four new clubs this year. Yes, I was as shocked as the rest of you governors when I heard that at International Assembly. Uh, I didn't know that was coming. Uh, but if we get anywhere near that, we're going to seriously move the needle this year on membership. I think it's entirely possible, and this is the group to do it. So thank you all. I know you're working hard. Patrick, thank you for that. And in fact, you've you've teed up quite nicely without realizing it. The next thing that, that I want to announce to this group, and that is if you haven't looked at the 2425 ICA, what they call new club worksheet, you will notice that of the 17 districts ICA of ICAs, nine of them are brand new to the role more than half and that's a that's a lot of transition all at one time um for that reason i just want to reinforce a couple things about what is asked of those folks first of all you there is no job description written anywhere believe me i've asked for it it doesn't exist should there be one yeah but 
that would almost be like drawing a box around you and saying, you must do this and you can't do anything else, which goes against being innovative to begin with. So I don't know that there's going to be one anytime soon. With that said, the reason there is a team of zone ICA people is to assist all 17 of those people, the nine who are new, the eight who are not, because the nine who are new can't be expected to know unless they're told. And, and being one of having been one of those other eight in the past, it doesn't hurt to have a refresher. So between now and next month's call, if you are your district's ICA, you can expect to be tapped by your zone team representative to make sure that you have a good grasp on what it is that's being asked for you. Two things most importantly, one of which has been my recent headache, the other one was an, a notion shared with me by our director, Patrick, just the other day. The first being, it's really important that you update your numbers each month and you check the box in that first column that says you've done that then I know whether you've gone in there and done that and I can forward that to Patrick and then he knows who's done it and he can share with the other 16 directors who's done it. The other thing that's important that, like I said, has been noted by Patrick is that the starting numbers for this year of the clubs in progress, even though we asked that it be checked, is less than the number of clubs that were in progress on June 30th. I can't imagine that we all just drew back and punted those ideas away and were not willing to move forward. I think it's just um, mischaracterized or perhaps fallen in the crack somewhere that those numbers didn't get transposed correctly. Like the box checking idea and the job description idea, the zone ICA team member that's associated with this district will reach out to you to make sure that 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 disconnect can be corrected and patrick if you want to speak to any more of that you please feel free of course it's just important that we show continuity and consistency and if you had 12 clubs in in formation on june 30th and then you switched roles a new ica came in they set their goals and that number's three well that's probably not right there's probably still those nine somewhere. It's just that not everybody's aware of that. That number needs to be 12 and or bigger, but certainly not smaller. So we're going to work on those things together and make everyone feel more comfortable about what it is that's being asked of them, which should make accountability a cinch at that point. Does anybody have any question that they can ask in just a minute or two or less at this point, or are you comfortable waiting to hear from your zone team member? Right on? Okay, perfect. Then let's do this. Let's do a little housekeeping. Um, you know, any of us are available and willing to attend and participate in your district meetings. I'm going to go see Marge next weekend. I'm going to go see uh, Brett Herbeck and his district to 7570 the weekend after that. That's why another reason we're kind of regionally sparse is that um, – we can be where we need to be. And if we're not there physically, we can certainly be there virtually because assistance is assistance no matter how you get it, I think, at least I hope. But with that said, here's some dates coming up in the near future. I want to share my screen with you all if I can. Make sure you get these on your calendar uh, because if history is any indicator, the, the most recent ones of each of these have been fabulous. You won't miss one. Coming up soon, if it will advance my slide. There we go. The next MAP membership action plan call, as you can see there, is uh, a week from yesterday, Monday, August the 12th at 530. The theme of that call will be enjoyable club meetings, improving the member experience. Do not be surprised if you hear the word irresistible at least 12 times during that call. The Monday after that, the 19th, is the monthly DMC call led by our Rotary Coordinator, Jerry Weaver. The very next day is the 20th, and anybody that follows the spreadsheet guidelines knows that's reporting day. You will get reminded. Don't worry. I won't leave you hanging. We ask that you get your numbers in and your box checked by that date. Then the next Zoom formation, like was held yesterday, will be on Monday, September the 2nd at 1 o'clock. 
the very next day, followed by September's version of this call, the monthly ICA call at five o'clock. Marge, you have a question before I show the next slide? Sean? Sir? Well, oh, go ahead, Marge. But I do have something to say before you advance. Oh, yes, of course. Marge, you're muted. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I, I want to say something at the end. I'm sorry that I hit early. That's okay. And Patrick, I know what you're going to say. The Zoom formation actually got postponed a week due to the U.S. holiday for Labor Day, correct? That's correct. We didn't think anybody would show up on Labor Day. <laughs> well, you'd have had these 30 people had I not made that mistake. <laughs> uh, and you corrected it. So I appreciate that. My, that is totally on me. My apologies to everyone. Zoom formation, Monday, September the 9th. Great. Sandy, you had a question before we move on? Yes, the August 19th um, uh, membership a D DMC call. Did that get moved to 530 or is it at 5? Terry Weaver, you still out there somewhere? It remains at 5. Uh, Matt moved to 530. Okay, gotcha. Thank there you. There you go. Thank <laughs> you for the clarity, sir. Any other questions? I saw a third hand up, but now it's down. I don't know who it was because I only see five of you. All right. With that said, you are going to love this next slide. Happy National Wiggle Your Toes Day. <laughs> That's right. Today is, in the United States, <laughs> National Wiggle Your Toes Day. I have absolutely no idea what that means or what it signifies. <laughs> Chris Justice for the demonstration. Gee whiz. Anything else for the good of the order? It's 553, seven minutes ahead of schedule. Everyone I got one. I got Go. one last thing. Can I ask you a question? Go uh, for it. Patrick, you were so very, Director Patrick, you were very, very political in explaining um, that you do share with the other zone directors the, you know, sheets and how you're doing across North America, correct? Right. Yeah, does that mean in like like our nitty gritty Sean Sawyer esque ICA terms that we need to kick everybody's ass across the North America, sir? Just sure. want to make sure that sure. I got that message. I want to make sure that we got that message. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. <laughs> Chris, Chris Jones just put an amen in the chat, so I guess that means we're good. Good. We need to take care of business. Thank you, guys. Excellent. Anybody? Anything else? Otherwise, hey, look, when people ask you, are those ICA calls really that enjoyable and lively? If for no other reason, but the last 54 minutes, you can honestly tell them, yes, they are. You don't want to miss it. Marge, you've got Marge, your hand up again once more. I do, um, because I'm thrilled that you are going to come to our district magic of membership on the 17th of August. I mean, you are going to be a big hit. Um, we had a district council meeting last night, and the interest of uh, innovation is big. <laughs> and, oh, I can't wait for you to come. So we are really thrilled. Thank you. You are too kind. They will likely carry me out before I'm finished, but I, too, <laughs> am looking forward to, to being there with you all. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. John, are, we, are we staying on after the call? We certainly can. If there's anything anything else for the group? Sean, yeah. just a question. Does that make you the magician of membership? <laughs> <laughs> now look. Just wondering. I, I like that. Um, you're, That's good, you're, Gary. You're, you're, you're gonna start turning people so, off. So is he the West Virginia M and M? Oh, well. yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, we could have fun with that. We could have fun with that. Because right. our whole our whole summit is called the magic of membership. So, you know, hey, Sean, go for it. I'm not Maybe against we'll... coming out with a pointy hat, but I don't know that it'll be the magician's version necessarily. Can we, can well, we do also can, all, do. can we also all just put tons of hate to Chris Justice for like working out while the, the meeting's on? I mean, I want to shoot yeah. you a bird, but I don't think that <laughs> yeah. 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 no guilt, no guilt. All right, folks. Yeah, good Thank job. Thank you all. Chris. I'm going to stop yeah. the recording and uh, I'll see you all in a month if I don't see you sooner. Bye Chris bye. Justice was voted most likely to show his toes. That's right. It's a new <laughs> national holiday. <laughs>